Okay, so the first one, uh, I'll, I'll number that. So the first one is the formula for A plus B squared, okay? So you have two numbers, you add them like that. So you get A plus B and then you square that. And so uh, the formula that that corresponds to, and I'll kind of go, um, I'll explain a little bit uh, where it comes from, uh, it is that this is equal to a squared plus b squared plus, okay, so like, you know, a uh, uh, common mistake is just to think that when you square the sum, it's just like the sum of the squares, but there's actually like an extra term that like pops out, which is three times the product between the numbers. So usually I'll kind of write them here as well because I want to refer to them uh, throughout the class and also and then I'll give you some problems and use those. So um so yeah, like the, like the most frequent mistake when people use this formula is to um, uh, to just say that a, a plus b squared is a squared plus b squared. So let me just emphasize that that's wrong. Like you can even kind of like just try it with some numbers to see that that works. So imagine like if a, let's say like just to make something easy, a is one and b is two. Okay, so if a is one and b is two, right? What is a plus b squared? A plus b squared would be one plus two squared, right? One plus two squared that would one plus two is three, so you get three squared and three squared is nine, right? So that is what a plus b squared would be for um, these two values of a and b. But if you do something like a squared plus b squared, that is a squared plus b squared, that's uh, a one, so you get one squared, and b two, so you get two squared, right? And so that's um, one plus four, which is five, right? So you, I mean, um, you can do like a numerical example to see why that's different, uh, but, you would be like, it is really one of the most common mistakes that um, you see it like happening. So uh, it's one to keep an eye on. So there are like a couple, um, you can maybe find some I'll kind of to tell you why uh, it works this way. So there's actually like a couple of ways to understand the formula. Like I'll kind of do it geometrically first, just to kind of uh, show you uh, where it comes from, but also like uh, algebraically, because that's kind of what we're trying to get used to. But like the geometric explanation for Uh, it's just basically, again, when you see a square, if you want, you can think about it in terms of like literally a square, like like the actual square, like the shape of the square. So what you can do is build a square, build a square of length A plus B. So let me put it like this. Okay. 
Yeah, it doesn't really matter which one is longer in the picture. I just I'm trying to make them make them of different sizes so that you don't think that they, they have to be the same. Uh, Yeah, I'll put it here. So this is a square whose uh, each side having length equal to a plus b is a square. Uh, with each side being of length. A plus B Okay. So what is the area of this square? The area of the like the area of a square is just like the length squared. Like so the area of the square is literally A plus B squared. So the area of this the complete square, like the total square, like area is just a plus B. I'm gonna put it in colors. In the same colors. This big square has area A plus B squared. Uh, so far so good. It gives us. But uh, what is that? So. What is the area of this square? Is the area of the green square that you see here, right? The area of the green square is A squared, right? Then we have the area of this blue, blue square, right? The area of the blue square is B squared. And then I'm missing something, right? Like I'm missing these two terms, right? So like there's a rectangle here, right? This rectangle has area, this side has like length A and this other side has length B. So A times B. And this other rectangle has uh, uh, one of the sides equal to B and the other side equal to A. So it's still A times B. So that is why how many, how many of those are there? There are two, like, oh, there's a different color of them. You'll see the orange too. Like the piece. So two A B, and that's where the two A B comes from. In fact, so essentially what the formula says is that to square the sum, you square each term and then you add twice their product. Like in practice, like the way we, we will use this more often is when like one of the numbers you got kind of think of it as X. So the way it's typically used for us would be something like this. Like, you know, if I gave you like X plus three squared, right? But if you use the formula, the formula says square each number and add those squares together, and then add twice the product of the numbers. The product of the numbers is x times three, okay? So that would give you uh, what, x squared plus nine, and then two times three is six, so you get six x. And then it's kind of like a traditional uh, convenient to kind of rewrite it so that the six, like the term with x is in, in between the other two terms. You know, then, uh, so that is kind of like descending in like the powers of x like square and then x to the one and, and then x to the zero. Okay, so that is like one way. Okay. 
Now, uh, the other way to do this, um, so this is kind of like a geometric way how you would think about it. Like it really is in terms of like areas. Like the other way to think about it is more like algebraically with this like distributive property or just foil, uh, to foil the product. Um, which is kind of like in practice, like how I would expect you to do to do the problem. So it's kind of like just nice to see that there's like a geometric interpretation, but like the kind of like our goal is to think about it more like in terms of algebra. So like the algebraic way to think about this formula. is just that what is a plus b squared? Well, a plus b squared is just a plus b times a plus b. That's what it means to, to, the, to the square. It's just they're just multiplying those two sums together. And then the distributive property says that you multiply kind of like um, each term in one parenthesis with every other term in the other parenthesis. So, a with A gives you A squared. Then I'll put this A with B. A with B gives you A B. Then B with A gives you B times A. And then the last one is B with B, which gives you B squared. Okay, and then after that, it's just like rearranging a little bit so that it looks exactly the same. So this is like, you know, a squared, let me put the B squared second term. And then these terms are the same because it doesn't matter in which order you do the product. Okay. So, uh, you know, once you kind of memorize the formula for doing the product, this is way faster, you know. Uh, this proof by picture is kind of like more clever in a sense, you know. Uh, but it, like in a, Really, what happens is like this is kind of defined so that it would match like what the answer is supposed to be from like the picture. So like it's like well, it's not a surprise that it kind of coincides. It really the distributive property, like the justification for it, is basically this. So that's where like it comes from. Um, but again, it's one that the I think we have used before, but I'm just kind of trying to lay them all together so that you can see uh, how it looks like. Uh, uh, now, so just to continue giving you some more tricks. So this is the first formula. Um, okay, so then the very, there's a variation of this formula where you're doing uh, A minus B squared, okay? Um, so like there are a few ways to kind of like come up with this formula uh, you know one way would be to do the distributive property but there's like a more clever way so before writing the formula well I'll write the formula and then kind of explain where it comes from That's how the formula looks like in this case. Uh, but uh, one, how is what is one way to think about this formula? Um, I mean, you could do it geometrically, you could do it distributive, like in the distributive property, but like there's actually one way to do it, which is just like in terms of like, we can use formula one to kind of find this one, which is kind of more, more interesting. Like, because that way you only have to really memorize one formula. That's the whole point. But, uh, what is A minus B squared? So A minus B squared, A plus negative B, Square because, like, subtracting b is just adding the opposite of b. Okay, so if you look at it from this perspective, it is still like formula one. Is formula one is just like with negative b instead of b. Okay, so we can use formula one 
So what does formula one say? It says square every term like that appears here. So I'll square the first term. What is the square of the second term? It's something like this. Okay. And then you do two times the product of the terms. So the terms are A and negative B now. So that's how the formula looks like. Okay. Is that making sense? Kind of like how I used it. And uh, then once you do that like that, then like, you get like a squared, negative b squared is b squared as well. And the minus, uh, you know, like this kind of like negative one times b, so that's why it becomes negative two. Okay, so that is for the, like, that is where the formula comes from. And again, you can kind of do it in a couple of examples, which are um, useful, like one that's very convenient to remember. Like it's useful to recognize this was this one like kind of kind of individually. So it's x squared plus one squared minus two times x times one. And, you know, you get x squared plus one minus two x. Which again you rewrite so that the negative two axes in the game. Okay, so that is actually like one of the most like this is like a peer circ uh, a lot of the time, so it's kind of convenient to to have it like you know memorized actually. Uh -huh. But the important thing here is that even when you're subtracting them, you know, even when you're subtracting two numbers, once you square them. You know, there's only uh, one that, like, you know, you are, you have two positive terms, which are a square and b square, and then you're subtracting this product. So, uh, in practice, you know, like these formulas, um, you know, they have two squares and then like a sum or a, or, or a, or a subtraction, like depending mm -hmm. on what the formula is for. Uh, so the next one, okay, let's just continue with this. So the next one is uh, a plus b cubed. Okay, so let me look at that back here. And then I'll give you kind of like the pattern for the general formula. Although a, a plus b cubed is kind of like the most I would ask you, but it's kind of still uh, useful to know how the pattern uh, works. So what is a plus b cubed? So before um, I write the answer, let's just try to find where it comes from. Um, okay, so how can you think, like, I don't want to write the, well, write it down. Okay, so where does this come from? Okay, so one uh, way to do this is again, uh, because now it's with a cube, a cube has to do with cubes. So it would be in terms of volume. So you, you actually can kind of like do a proof that is like by finding the volume of a certain cube. And that's where the formula comes from, like, which is kind of clever, but that one can get a bit confusing because then you need like a 3D picture, like, you know, like an actual, you know, you, you, that one does require more imagination than just drawing a square, which is not that bad. So that is like actually what's the point, like the point of algebra, that you kind of don't need to develop that skill, like of visualizing like a cube where like you can see how it looks like. So the, you know, the point, how could you, Find this, like you can think of a plus b cubed, right? As a plus b times a plus b squared. 
Okay, that is one way to think about that formula. Okay. Is that okay? Does make sense to everyone? And then what is a plus b squared? That is essentially, oh my God, like a, sure, sorry, when I copied it here on the board, like, should I put like the square on the side? Sorry about that. Um, just in case. And hopefully I did it okay on this side of the board. Uh, so, um, when you do have a plus b squared, what is this? Like, that is where like, you can use that formula, which is a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. Okay. And once you get to this point, uh, you do the other, like the thing that uh, I was doing before, like where you distribute. So it's actually like a good ex exercise to distribute together. So again, it's every term here against every other term in the second parenthesis. So this one with this one gives you a cube. You don't know how many colors. Uh, this one with this one gives you a b squared. Uh, this one with this one gives you to a squared b, and then I have to do the same with, with, with the b terms. So this one with this one gives you b a squared. Um, this one with this one gives you b cubed, that's where the b cube comes from. And then, um, which other color do I have now? I think I used blue here. So, and then this one with this one gives you to a well, so like uh it's kind of important to notice that here like you know since there were like two terms in this sum and three terms in this other sum, you get two times three, which is six terms altogether. Right? So it's like the number of terms that you get here is always like the, the product. So like if this is, if this had had four terms and this one three, then you get four times three, which is 12. This would have had 12 terms, okay? And, and after that, it's just like rearranging. So like there's an A cube here, okay? Then, uh, you know, there's, this one has like the a squared a, so this one has a squared b, ah, and then this, there's this, this, this one also which has an a squared, so there's two here and one here, so that, that is how you end up with three a squared b, so we put it. Okay. And then this one has a b squared, and this one has a b squared, so there are two from the key, this term and one from this one. So that's how you get uh, this three a b squared. And the last one is with b. And kind of like the same happened. Uh, okay, so that is for a plus b cubed. The same would happen if you wanted to do a minus b cubed. So, so what is that going to be like? Uh, be equal to. So let me just explain it in the same way as I did for the other one. How can you think of a minus b cubed? So you can think of that as a plus negative b cubed. Okay, and so it becomes exactly that formula, but you know, with negative b instead of b. So it becomes the first one cubed plus three times the first one squared times the second one. The second one is now negative b, not no longer b. Okay. And then three times the first one times the second one. The second one is now negative b squared. And then the last one, the second term is cubed. So the second term cubed is negative b cubed. 
Okay, and so what do you get here? A cubed is A cubed. This is just pick up like, again, negative B is like negative one times B. So that's why this becomes negative three A squared B. N negative, negative becomes plus. So like this negative B squared just, it's just B squared. So. And then this one is negative times negative times negative, which is negative. So it gets you a negative. So, uh, And I mean, you could go on like this kind of go on forever. Um, like in practice, like that's what we will need the most. I kind of will leave it at that. But if you look at the notes, I kind of like give you like a formula for any number. So if you want like a plus b to the fifth, like how could you do it? Like you need to do something that's called like the Pascal triangle. But like you know. You not you rarely encounter more than the cube stuff like problems like you know in most courses. So I this is more or less enough. But it's kind of like useful to see like you know just to think about it. how do you like that's the advantage of algebra because um you know to get this um you can just like work with the algebra uh properties and then no actually let me see if I can find like the big one. Or how this would look like if you try to do it with cubes of the shirt, that it's a little way easier. You should see like the advantages of algebra. Uh, Okay, yeah, like this, let me show it to you just so that you can see that it's like a complete, I mean, not a complete mess, but it, it is a lot more clever uh, when you find it. So again, like to find A plus B cubed, I literally just broke it into like a product and I already knew the answer for A plus B squared. Um, I'll probably ask you something like this tomorrow, but it's just for you to kind of like redo this formula on the quiz, so like just to make sure like it's kind of like one on the two. Um, but say, yeah, if you wanted to do it with actual pictures, uh, let's see, I think they don't stand up nicely. Yeah, like here it is. Like you kind of have to make a cube where one side is like that side, the length of the size is A plus B. And so the volume is A plus B cubed. And then you have to kind of break it into a bunch of mini pieces. And that's how you start kind of finding like, you know, the, the individual terms in the volume. So it's kind of like, once you have the cube, you can kind of break it into all these, like, well, two are actual cubes, which are like the, uh, the red and the purple. And that's where you get the A cube and B cube. And then you have like all these mini, like present, like uh, remaining like rectangular uh, boxes. And then you have to find the volume of those. All that I'm trying to say is that it is a lot more complicated with the, you know, the picture it is like um, a more like, that requires more skill than just like, you know, write it down on like algebraically and just like do the product of everything. Um, which is why algebra is kind of, from, oh, that's actually like another, another nice one uh, illustration here. That's the point of algebra that it requires, in a sense, less skills than trying to do it geometrically, you know, like uh, that's the advantage of like doing something algebraically. That it, it, it is kind of more like, you know, more like of like manipulation of letters and, 
you don't really have to be thinking through about all the details of what's going on. Like as seen here, if you were to make a picture with that, okay. So, but again, like in practice, I would say, you know, once you use them a lot of, uh, over and over, you can end up memorizing them. Uh, so I would say like these four, like definitely these two are like a must memorize. Like they will be used over and over. Like, you know, like in, if you ever take other classes, like these two, like you don't have to memorize That's That's the whole point of doing that, right? Like the, if you, you never need to memorize this formula, you can always do it this way and then you will find it. Of course, in practice, sometimes you may want to save yourself a couple of seconds or minutes like so you, you can memorize it. But I'm just saying like, once you know these two, like the other two can be found like you know, just for, like by doing something like that. Um, Okay, and then so much again. And then let me give you uh, a couple more. So the other one that's really, really important uh, are the difference of squares and cubes. So let's see if I can go over them. Uh, it would be number five. Okay, so again, that is like a super important formula that really is used a lot of the time. So let me put it here. Let me put the name. Oh, it's, it's already here. It's difference of square because you take the square of two numbers and you find their difference. Um, Okay, uh, now, um, uh, okay, why is this true? Um, literally, I guess to go through the geometry proof because it's kind of cute in this case. Literally, what you're doing is comparing the area of two squares. This is like, so like the name like is well placed. You're making, taking the difference in the area of two squares. So basically when, what you can do is, um, let me put it here. Um, you, let's say you have, uh, like for illustrative purposes, I'll put like the square A being larger. So you have a, a square of like A each side. So this one will have area equal to A square, right? And then you have a, a square of length B, each side has length B, so this area is B squared, and you're comparing like these areas, like so you're, you want to take this area minus this area, that's essentially what you're doing in this difference of square formula, so how can you kind of think about it in terms of a picture, just move the square, one, the smaller square on top of the bigger one, so let's do it this way. So you're kind of subtracting from the yellow area and the pink area, right? So like the difference, like what's the difference in area is going to be like, it's going to be it's going to be the leftover stuff is going to be this thing and to, like, I'm kind of breaking it into uh, in a convenient way so that you'll see what's going on here together with this thing. Right, so that, that is a remaining area that you get if you kind of remove the, the pink square from inside the yellow square, if that makes sense. So you just have to think about what would the, the formula for that be. Uh, okay. 
And so one way to think about it is like, you know, there's, there's this rectangle. There's this, re this rectangle that has, what, what are the sides of this rectangle of the blue one? Oh, these sides are B and the other side is A minus B. So this other side is A minus B. So like this rectangle, the blue rectangle has area. The blue one has area A minus B times B. Okay. And then the green one was the area of the green one. So the green one has one of the sides is just A. And the other side, which is this one here, is uh, A minus B again. So let's put it like A minus B. This one gives it. So the, the green one has area. This one has area A minus B times A. Okay. So the difference of squares is like the blue area plus the green area. So what do you get here? You get like that this should be the blue area. Plus the green area. And like you can kind of then factor out a minus B, and once you factor that out, you get B plus A, which is the same as A minus B times A plus B. Okay, and that is where the formula comes from. So, like the difference of square is literally comparing the area of two squares. So, we're going to pull that out. Now, how is this used in practice? So like, for example, uh, this is very convenient for, this formula is super useful for the factorization. So this is like a useful formula. So here's like an example. Like if I gave you x squared minus four, right? What is x squared minus four? That is x squared minus two squared, okay? So this is essentially like A and B, right? A and B. So this is like X minus two times X plus B because this is like, uh, X is like A here and B is two in this case. So that is like a, a first authorization that you could make that time. Now, how about, so this is the first one. And, okay, this is a tricky question. This is not the one I'm doing here. So what do you think about this one? Can you do something similar? X four minus two, can you factorize it in a similar way? What would you need to do here? So like in the first case, like what happened is that like, you know, four happened to be a square, right? Like four was two square. So the question is, is two a square? Yes and no, it is root of two square, which is, seems like a, a cheat, but it is true, right? Like, so two is root of two square. Like, you know, it, you're not cheating because that's kind of how square root was defined. So I, I kind of bring this example out because I remember like over the summer, like I had like a calc one problem that it required factorizing exactly this one. And one of the students got stuck because like, you know, it is not super obvious, right? Like that you can do that. And that's like a very useful trick, you see? Uh, so like, you know, like appearances can be deceiving because like it, this may not look like the difference of squares, but it's actually like a square the moment you remember the root, the two equals root of two square. Does that make sense? Uh, so that one is actually trickier than it looks like, you know, it may look, look silly, but it's not as silly as like it, would, it may seem. And after you, if you notice that, then, then you're good to go, you know. It's, uh, 
So I'm just saying like that is why where square root is useful. Square root like actually like the generalization of that would be something like x part. Uh, let's call it p actually. So that is like p is kind of like the the same one here. Like you know x part minus p. Assume, assuming the p is positive, right? The, the point of this exercise is kind of like to think about it as x squared minus root of b squared. You see? And then it kind of like goes exactly in the same way as before. So that is like kind of like a special case. Like this one is a special case of that one. But all that I'm saying is that, you know, when you look at a number, uh, that is where square roots come in. Like, so they allow you to write that number as a square. Um, looks like a little bit like you're cheating, but I mean, that's kind of like the whole point of like introducing like the square root so that you can kind of do precisely this type of things. Um, so that makes sense kind of, so it's kind of like less stupid uh, it seems at the beginning. So in fact, let's do another one, which is kind of like in, in disguise. You may think, okay, this is not so interesting. But here's another one. So imagine like they, they gave you x to the four minus 16, right? So at least for sure, like, you know, it doesn't have like the same structure as this formula, right? Because like the exponent here is four and not two, but that's again, kind of like going back to this point like of the illusions. So the first thing you can at least do, maybe that's kind of more clear is that 16 is four squared, right? So that now at least the second term looks exactly like the, the formula, right? Because there's a two in the exponent. Now, is there a way to do something similar with x to the four? How can you think of x to the four? Uh, you want to kind of think about it as a square or something. What would you say? It's x squared squared. Perfect. Yeah. So it's x squared squared, right? Then I can sense. And then it's, you're good to go because this is kind of like a and this is b, right? So a in this case, like, let me put it here so because it can be confusing. I'm thinking of a as x squared and I'm thinking of b as four. Okay. Like in the difference of square formula, so that gives you what does that give you? It gives you at least write it like this a minus b times a plus b, right? But a is like x squared, so you get x squared minus b, b is four times um a plus b, which is x squared plus four. Oh, and actually x squared minus four we already did, right? Like so we can factorize that. At least this one can be factorized. You cannot factorize x squared plus four anymore. At least uh, for this course. If you have seen imaginary numbers, you can, but that's a bit different story. Uh, so this is the most you can also kind of break this any further, but this one you can. So you get x minus two times x plus two. So this is like an example where you use uh, the, the formula twice. Okay. And then maybe just to do one more, um, uh, like this is, but this is really, really fundamental. Like this is like of all the ones that I had written, I think this one and this one are the two most useful ones, like the first and the last so far. Like, but the, the difference of square appears all the time, and that's like a very convenient formula to have. Um, The last one, uh, which I'll give you, like the last one that I'll give you for today, is the difference of cubes. So I want to do something very useful. Uh, last color will be perfect. So the last one is the difference of cubes.
Uh, and literally, again, if you thought about it in terms of a picture, what you're doing here is compare the volume of two cubes. That's what it means calling why that's why it's called the difference of cubes. You have two cubes, one has a one is a cube of length A, the other is a cube of length B. So like the volume is A cubed and the volume for the other is B cubed, and you're kind of comparing the volumes. Now the thing is like, have, like so you just imagine having two cubes and kind of like kind of figuring out the volume, like the difference in volumes, like if you actually had them like physically, that is a tricky thing to do. Like already like the square one, like it's not super easy, but like the cu cubic one is like complicated. So like that is where the algebra is, that is where algebra is useful because like you don't have to do the picture. Like that's the whole point of algebra. Like don't do the, you don't need to do the picture if you don't want to. So the, the trick is kind of like uh, relying on the difference of square formula. So before writing it out, let me, show you where it comes from. So I'll do something that kind of looks very annoying, but kind of work. And of course, like it looks like cheating because how would you not to do this? But you know, someone figure it out. Uh, so you just like add and subtract the same quantity. So I'll kind of like add a b squared and subtract a b squared, okay? I can do that because like when you subtract and like, you know, subtract and, uh, when you add and subtract the same amount, like you're just kind of like adding zero to everything. So like adding zero is always fair game. It's just like a very interesting way of writing zero, right? Because like, why would you think about it in this way? So that's kind of like the, the clever part. But once, if you kind of do that, like, you know, who knows why, what you see here is like, okay, then you can kind of factor these two, like four terms in pairs. So I'll factor the first one with the, I'll factor these two together. Oh, what can I factor out here? Like the only thing that they have in common is an A, okay? So I'll put A. And so what, what's left in the first sec in the first term? An A squared, right? And what's left in the second term? A B squared, which is great because A squared minus B squared will be something that we had before. So that's like, and then, uh, let's see. Oh, sorry, this uh, actually, oops, like the one that I'm, like, I want it with a minus, so like, I'm sorry, I, I meant this one. So that like, if one is a plus and the other is a minus, so now it's a squared minus b squared. And then I'll do, I'll do this one with that one, okay? So what do these two have in common? The, what, the light term is b squared, okay? And so once you take out the big squared, uh, this one will, like the remaining stuff is A for this term and the remaining stuff uh, for this other one is B. Is that uh, And then the, the first parenthesis, you can kind of like expand it out by like using the difference of square formula. And then you notice, oh, there's an actually an A minus B that's a common term. So you end up getting A minus B. And so this gives you A times A plus B squared. And uh, it kind of looks a bit ugly to write it that way. So you kind of just do the, the multiplication. Inside that parenthesis, you get a squared plus a e plus b squared, and that's like the common way to write the difference of cubes formula. So the difference of cubes, let me write it: a minus b plus a squared plus a e plus b squared. And that was the last formula that I wanted to give you for today. So, I mean, I'm not kind of like expecting you to kind of like read the rise one like this. It's kind of more complicated, but something like a plus b cube, that's okay. I would just give you like a formula for a plus b over so that, you know, you just break it as a product and like we did earlier. But yeah, like the difference of cube formula is kind of hard to find, like because it involves like this trick 
of like adding and subtracting the a plus a b squared, uh, which is not obvious at all. But it's just kind of like to show you how like you know that's the whole point of algebra. Sometimes you can just like rearrange the expressions in a way that's not super clear when you do it that way, but it kind of lends some working in the end. I mean, like the justification for doing this, it really comes like if you thought about it in terms of the cubes, like actual cubes, and then you compare the volumes of those cubes, like that's where like the idea comes from. But if you don't have the picture, then yeah, it does look a little bit like uh, dark magic or whatever. So, um, but uh, that is like how it looks like. So for example, here's like a, a useful one to have, like which also appears a lot in practice. X cubed minus one, that's X cubed minus one cubed, right? So the difference of cubed formula gives you back one and one, but that's X for X for one. And then like a very useful um, uh, uh, factorization that appears often uh, when you're working with the cubes. So like, Again, like usually, you know, um, we would you would start with something like this, and then you would uh, break it into factorizations. And then, uh, you know, this is the most like you, know, you can factor this out. There's no way to factor this out uh, again unless you have like imaginary numbers, which don't get really into this course. So this is kind of like the most that it can be factored out, basically. Uh, Yeah. So essentially, yeah, like maybe I, I, I won't get into why we can factor this more, but I'm just saying that that is kind of like factorization or something like that. Okay. Um, so that's how like uh, those properties look like. I'll leave this here because after the quiz, I'll kind of like just ask you to, to use some of them to factor a couple of things and just like for you to apply these properties. Uh, let's do that one, yes.